it's Leslie Meredith with Breakbulk Events and Media. I am here in Dubai at Breakbulk Middle East, the second day, and we have just finished a session uh, around offshore wind, huge opportunity here, and I think we covered some other uh, energy projects in that session as well. And I have our moderator, Mohammed Jaber from DSV with me here in the studio to share the highlights with us. Uh, th thank you. Uh, actually, first, the event itself is like uh, grown a lot. The number of attendees uh, to the event is is uh, it's fantastic, and the uh, the who came actually is not only a crowd; it's a very nice crowd in the industry, and who comes searching for something or want to deliver a message. Today, in, on, on the panel, uh, the hall is is, is full. And, and people thirsty to hear about uh, the subject. Uh, it, it, uh, it is a new subject for, for, for actually for our region. Our region is not, uh, seems to be a, a, a likely good area for uh, renewable in the past. But today with the uh, huge transformation into solar and recently into wind. Wind is an, a, a kind of expensive capex. And we try to uh, let the team here and the people understand that it's changing. Now the wind technology changed, improved, logistics mean uh, 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 equipments, vessels are available, and how the great collaboration happened between uh, different government entities and service providers and municipalities, authorities, to make it a success. That was one of the really good uh, examples how there is a will to solve this problem, and it worked. I think something that um, I've noticed is that, particularly when, it, when the government says it's going to do something here, it does it. It, ha it actually happens, which is exciting and not always the same in other parts of the world. So tell me how you see the potential of offshore wind. Uh, actually, you are right, but the governments also start with having clear goals and it means something for them and they do something about it immediately. They plan for now, for uh, another 10 years and for 50 years. They, they plan on, on assets and knowledge, on investment on the new generation, an education system. So the wind, uh, and this was one of the questions, what's happening here for the, the, the schools and the universities, already those programs integrated to the government agenda to produce these people here. The knowledge, that's a very important asset. As well, the local industries, how to support this transformation. Uh, uh, today we've seen that with the government vision and commitment and the commitment from the private sector and the semi-government sector, how everyone has that clear, simple alignment that we gonna do it. So money can do anything, but how you can do it with full collaboration at the most effective cost, so it's feasible. It's not just a, like a sink cost or just we do it. No, we do it with proper way, with uh, being a cost effective and being in the core of sustainability. Sustainability means that we have to be more friendly with acquire, uh, uh, environment and we have to be more profitable and feasible. It doesn't mean that we waste our resources. So here is a great example and we see how it's going right now in Saudi, in Oman, in our region. There is a transformation happening. The only difference I see it right now is our acceleration. Our acceleration is very good. We are catching up uh, in, in, in a very good way and I see the another maybe 10, 15 years, the whole thing will be different. As we see here, usually in UAE, the things goes very fast. In wind energy, we are thinking that this is now is only the start. So is there anything, as, as, as the offshore wind projects uh, start to come, you know, get financial approval, etc., is there anything else in this market that needs to happen to be sure that uh, 
the projects can be built efficiently. Now, this is goes in wind and goes in every other project. Uh, uh, our, we are lucky here that our region in the next uh, maybe decade is, is full of projects. The government and the big companies here uh, announced a massive capital projects. In, not in only in, uh, in oil and gas, but in re renewable energy, in hydrogen, in, uh, uh, in industries, uh, 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 and that's even in construction, in real estate, like what you see what now happening in Neom or uh, in, in UAE, in Abu Dhabi, in uh, Oman, Qatar. That's massive. But what I think might be our challenge is the capacity, is the ability to cope with all those requirements within this time frame. Uh, today there is uh, a demand in equipment. If, if you want to buy a new crane or a new vessel, it's not uh, uh, on shelf. You have to order it for a few years ahead. So the demand will become uh, the, uh, in increased a lot and the capacity might be uh, in a question. Plus what other support services needed? It's not only building a project, but you need repair and maintenance and maintaining those projects. What new industries will come to our market? Like if we talk about wind, there is repair and maintenance for these winds. There is replacement, there is uh, special cranes needed, there is special resources. Those are new opportunities for people to invest in locally. Uh, we talked today with uh, Roldoc and, and Adno Kalinis. What are the components can be manufactured locally? That will transfer and transform our, our local economy, not only to produce what we need locally, but what the opportunity for us to re-export those components to the rest of the world. And that's the knowledge seeded by the government with those projects, but the opportunity for the investors, for local companies, uh, for forwarders like us in DSV, how we can cope also with the next few years when this industry and ecosystem developed. So we'll not be only importing, but we'll be exporting and continuous improvement. China today is the biggest uh, uh, investor and producer for wind energy. But here we have the, the means and with the, the technology improvement, the industrial technologies improvement in the wind blades and the efficiency of the turbine made our region suitable for wind. So the change is coming and the, uh, the task on us on finding how we can address one of those challenges and solve it and make good sustainable business around it. Absolutely. Well, I love the talk about um, transformation. I think that um, for UAE to be manufacturing uh, and exporting would would be have a tremendous uh, beneficial effect to the country. Absolutely, this is great. Um, we are in DSV very proud of uh, being here. Uh, DSV, one of the biggest, maybe three, four companies in the world, been with massive experience in wind turbine transportation, in wind plate and wind uh, tower component transportation. And they come with massive experience on how to make the things in very cost effective. How they can help uh, local governments, how we can help uh, ABC contractors, project owners, to make uh, the um, impossible possible. How we can bring all our expertise and experiences and challenge solved elsewhere in the world to the local uh, communities here and collaborate with everyone uh, to make our uh, coming generation with better opportunities. Absolutely. Put so well. Thank you so much, Mohammed. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and today was particularly informative.